Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the first video in the Backyard Plant Propagation Series. I guess we're gonna call it season two. Uh, last year, I built a little PVC house here. Um, all of those videos uh, are available on my channel and I'll link them up here, up top somewhere. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just uh, click on that link. And it's like 17 videos in that series. If you wanna build this little PVC one I built last year as an alternative to building this metal one, and this is just out of the top rail from a chain link fence. Uh, a couple months ago, or maybe a little more, I did a video using this uh, simple, simple pipe bending tool to show how to bend these uh, top rails into these types of hoops like this. This is very inexpensive material. It's a thin gauge metal, so you're not gonna build a professional 100 foot long greenhouse out of this. It's going to last you the next 30 years of your life. This is, you know, this, this a serious storm uh, still could damage this, uh, but it's certainly much, much, much longer lasting than that PVC house would be because the PVC actually breaks down in the sun over time and ends up cracking apart. This certainly won't do that, but it would need to be protected from heavy snow loads and that kind of thing. So I'm going to be using the same clock that I used in last year's series, and you can go back and find that video about the clock and how to set it up. I had mounted it to the fence uh, over here. Uh, electric and everything's still working over there. Everything's good to go. So I'm going to continue to use that exact clock. I'll link it in the description below. It's very important that the clock that you're using needs to work on seconds. I explained that in that video. Uh, we're using little micro irrigation here. It's gonna come on very briefly, just lightly moisten the leaves on our, rooted, on our unrooted cuttings to keep them moist. And uh, it's very important that the clock work on seconds and be able to turn back on and off within you know, five minutes uh, and run as many times in a cycle as we need to in a 24 hour period, very important. Uh, that clock fits that description and it's under $100. Every other clock is in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars that will have those features. So here's the hoop that I bent in that video. This is two of these top rails from a chain link fence. They're about 10, I think they're 10 feet, six inches long, each of them. They're put together right here. And then this is the exact one I bent in that video. I didn't want a house that tall over here in my backyard, but two of these together make a perfect walk-in uh, greenhouse or frost protection house. Uh, as you can see, I'm standing under it. There's a foot um, over my head here, uh, no problem. So it's about maybe right at seven feet tall inside the house, which would be perfect for a walk-in house. In my backyard here, I don't want anything that big or you know, that obtrusive, honestly. So what I did was I took off about two feet on each side or right at two feet on each side, okay? Uh, I have, um, this is fairly thin pipe, so you can use a hacksaw. I have a, uh, I have a chop saw with a metal cutting blade on it, so I made quick work of it. But it, you know, this, this is thin enough pipe that almost any hacksaw will work to cut this metal down. So I'm, what I did was I took three of these and <laughs> cut them down and made three that are that size. I'll show you that up close. So here's a close up of this clock. This is a box I found for cheap last year and I actually wired um, a little electrical outlet here. So I've been able to plug my tools into there, which has also been nice. And then the clock is wired uh, over to this valve. So this is the irrigation from last year, uh, wired back to the clock, and it's got these misters on it. Obviously in this larger footprint, I'm going to need more of those. And so next video, I'll be redoing uh, the irrigation for the inside of this. Uh, they need to be spaced probably something like 30 inches apart. So I'll get in here and figure out the exact spacing that I need for that. I'm going to put plastic uh, on the entire space and then gravel uh, everything just like we did last year but part of it's already covered from then. Okay, this bottom frame is just made out of two befores. It's just two before treated material. This uh, is 12, this was a 12 foot piece and that was a 12 foot piece. I cut the two feet off of the bottom of these um, hoops, uh, just like I just told you on both sides. And then I let that determine the width of this greenhouse. I ended up taking about a foot off of each of those uh, 12 foot pieces, probably slightly less than a foot. So there, it's a little over 11 feet wide now. But like I say, I just let the hoop determine uh, that width. Okay, then this was also a 12 foot piece that I just cut in half. So I got a six foot piece there and a six foot piece there, and I screwed the ends together from the outside. Okay, these hoops are, I drilled a hole Right here in the center, this is an old bolt that I had. These were actually, these three were actually off a house that I had at the, green, at the nursery for a long time. These are three inch bolts 
which work well for this because they barely, barely fit. So they won't end up hanging low and cutting me every time I go into the greenhouse. So three inch bolts work great for putting two of these top fence rails together. These are carriage bolts, so they won't turn while I tighten them down. I'm also going to be bolting it to the frame down here. So I, I'm gonna go this way on this side. So I probably need about a three and a half inch bolt to go through that and I don't have any today. This one in the center is probably gonna need more like a four inch bolt because I'm gonna have to go in through here, through here. So you need a drill bit that will cut through metal and wood, which most do now. Most, most, most drill bits you get are good for uh, doing both. And I, these are five, I used a 5 16 uh, drill bit and a slightly smaller bolt than that. This bar that's going across the top right here is called a purlin, okay? This little short house that I've made here that's only, I guess it's a little over four feet tall, I'm only gonna put one purlin on the top of it right here. If I was gonna use those two full-size top rail bars and put them together, I would have used three purlins. I would have, be, I would have ran another one right here and of course the center one would have still been there and I would have run another one right here to make it more rigid. But those are, like I say, those are called purlins. You'll notice the orientation of this house. Uh, I, I don't really care to expand it ever and I want a large door so that I can go into it. So in order to have a large door and uh, fit this space, I turn the greenhouse sideways. Uh, just trying to show you that it doesn't really matter which direction you put the greenhouse. Last year's hoops were this way, right here, and uh, worked out well, but I want a space in this thing where I can actually just kind of go into it more easily and uh, not have to crawl around so much. So I think this is gonna work out well. The length of your greenhouse is important. Uh, in my case, it doesn't really matter. Any plastic in the world is gonna fit this because it's only six feet. Uh, it's only six feet long right here. But if I had, if I turned this thing sideways and I started running hoops, you know, just all the way up the grass, all the way up here to this river birch, it matters. Uh, the length matters because plastic is sold in 25, 50, 75 foot, 100 foot rolls. And so you need to keep your greenhouse slightly smaller than those increments. If somebody tells you they have a 100 foot greenhouse, they likely have a 96 foot greenhouse with a 100 foot roll of plastic on it. So they have the extra two feet of plastic on each end uh, to wrap around like this down to the wooden end frame. I'm gonna build the end frame next week. So what, what you're looking at so far is I've got one, two, three, two by four by 12s. I've got an additional eight two by four by eights that we're gonna build the end walls out of. I'm thinking it's gonna take about four two by four by eights for each of the end walls on this side and on that side right there. With the purlin, you're gonna need about seven top rails if you wanted to do this exactly the way I'm doing them. They cost about $12.50 in my area. The lumber uh, wasn't too bad, so I don't know what that uh, adds up to, but I'm somewhere probably, I'm probably, I wanna keep this with the plastic and everything under $200 if I can. It's a little more difficult using metal. The PVC greenhouse, of course, uh, was super inexpensive last year. And you can do this size greenhouse out of PVC as well. There's no problem doing this with one inch uh, Schedule 40 PVC. I think we could fit that. Um, this would not be too much of a bend at all uh, to accomplish that. And then uh, you would just use a, a, a PVC T right here to connect the purlin right there. And then we use a PVC, a one inch cross right there to connect those tubes, those tubes, the purlin and the purlin, and the same thing in the back with a T. And so this would be pretty easy to do with PVC as well. But this is gonna give me a lot more flats than last year. I don't know how many I ended up being able to get in here at the time, maybe 12. So we should be able to put more like 30, you know, 25 to 30 flats in here. I'd actually like an, a, a spot in here that's not irrigated. So I may have a spot over here where I can take a flat that's slightly rooted and I don't wanna take it out of the greenhouse, uh, but I don't want it on the irrigation anymore. I might create a space that's uh, has no irrigation. A couple other things if you wanted to follow along with this greenhouse exactly. Uh, this board, the six foot board, is on the outside of the 11 foot board right there. So I attached it from, from this direction. And the purlin in the middle, since these pipes right here end up sitting on the inside of the greenhouse like that, uh, that board is an inch and a half wide, okay? And that board is an inch and a half wide. So the purlin that I cut for the center right here 
instead of being 72 inches, which is six feet, it's uh, 69 inches. And that way it lines up perfect right there with the end. Because like I say, this is on the inside of this two by four. So the Perlin's 69 inches. So I wanna move this along pretty quickly. I think last year I was about eight videos in before I actually started doing any propagation. But it is important that you see you know, how I constructed this. And you know, any orientation to these uh, hoops would be fine. I could have run them this way. I just didn't want them you know, 12 feet. You know, these are 11 feet wide. And from there, it would have come all the way out to here in my grass. And I just didn't want to take up that much space. And I have this entrance in here. So it's a sideways greenhouse. Who cares? It doesn't matter. When I started in the nursery business, I had to build hoop houses and greenhouses and propagation houses and out of anything I could get my hands on because you don't have a lot of money when you're starting off. It costs so much money to buy pots and buy all the things that you need to buy. And if you're just rooting a couple cuttings for yourself for, you know, for, to replant your backyard or hand out to friends, uh, you know, I don't want to spend but so much money on it. So, you know, I can kind of piece together some inexpensive things and build houses in all different types of directions and all different types of styles really quickly. This will not be the only method we'll be using. I'll, again, use some uh, boxes without uh, mist propagation in them, just like I did in last season's videos. Uh, some years I can start doing cuttings in a, in a big way uh, by mid to late May. This year we were getting frost almost until the beginning of May and e even right up until the beginning of May. And so my plants have not hardened off enough really to start taking cuttings. This is an example of that. This is a, an Elysium right here that's in my yard and you see how, how this is. If you had, <laughs> this, is a, this would be called a softwood cutting, okay? And there are nurseries, um, especially perennial nurseries, take a lot of softwood cuttings. Uh, and they are rootable, but you need just perfect conditions for to do softwood cuttings effectively. Because if your irrigation goes off for any length of time, this would be very unforgiving. I use semi-hardwood cuttings. We're going to let this harden off just a little bit, so it's just not quite this pliable. As soon as it hardens off a little bit, I think another two weeks, we'll get started on it. You can also root hardwood cuttings, which are material further down in the plant where the where it's turned woody. Those tend to take longer. So. I, just my experience, the easiest thing to, the easiest, most consistent thing to root is semi hardwood cuttings. And sometimes they're hardened off by now, right around the 1st of June, the end of May. This year they're not, so it's gonna be about June 15th before I start taking cuttings in a big way. Between now and then, uh, I'll put up a video putting the end walls on here, putting plastic down, putting the gravel in, reworking this irrigation. And then we'll put the plastic on it in the third video and uh, I'll show you all the alternative ways you could put the plastic on it. I also need to get a shade cloth cover for this. The shade cloth I had from last year won't be big enough for this one. So uh, uh, I guess this is 6 by 12 plus the hoop has some height to it. So I'll probably try to find something that's in the you know 8 by 16 range I think would cover this. Okay, anything that's close to that uh, for a shade cloth that I'll put over the plastic. We'll be using 6 mil uh, clear greenhouse film on this or any six mil clear plastic uh, on this. I'll probably just get it at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. But I'll use six mil, four mil is a little too thin, uh, especially now that we're switching to metal. The PVC is a little friendlier on the plastic, but the metal has the potential to, uh, to, to wear the plastic out a little quicker if the wind's moving it around on the metal at all. So we will use six mil plastic, but that's it. I'll link this pipe bender in the description of this video. It's kind of important that you go back and watch the pipe bending video or the pipes being bent already in this video don't make a whole lot of sense. And the, uh, any of the videos from last year about the clock that I'm using and the irrigation system that I've set up here, which I'll go over in a lot more detail next week. If you have any questions on this, I know I'm gonna miss stuff in every video. Uh, ask them in the description of this video and then uh, I'll either answer them there or I'll make sure I work it into one of the videos so that everybody gets that piece of information. Thank you very much for watching this first episode and I'll see you again soon.